So, so far we have been mainly looking at the static structure. Now we're gonna go on to the technique called molecular dynamic simulation. So as a, um, so now we're gonna take a static structure and put some information and allows it to sample over a period of time. So allow it to move a little bit. So what do we need? So let's say I have four atoms, A, B, C, and D here in a very simple system. Okay, and I'm gonna have another one, A, B, C, and D, okay? Now, I am going to have to fix certain part of C and D. That is, I'm gonna fix the bond length. So let's say C and D are bonded. So I'm gonna fix the bond length. I probably have to fix the angle between B and C and D. So this would be my theta. And I'll probably have to fix this torsion angle here, which is gonna be psi. Right, these terms, and I can draw this here as well. Yeah, I'm gonna fix these, I'm gonna fix that. And, and these are what we call a bonded term. Yeah, so we are gonna have bond length, bond angle and dihedral. And these are bonded term, which are going to restrict the shape. So this are the information we're gonna say, well, C, D and B are going to have this angle and these atoms, specific type of atoms are going to have these specific orientation in this kind of environment. Of course, um, these are bonded. So these are, you know, the direct bond interaction between them. You can also have something called non-bonded interactions where, you know, two distant um, atoms which are not forming, which are not bonded together are going to interact. So this is gonna be non-bonded interaction, which um, can be divided into two categories here. We can have um, electrostatic interaction, which they're going to have a plus minus charge. And that's gonna be it calculated using two algorithm, which is cutoff and PME. We are not gonna discuss that in detail, but it will calculate the electrostatics or plus minus interaction and Leonard Jones interaction, which then tells how they're gonna interact when they come closer or further apart from each other. So they're gonna have Leonard Jones and electrostatic interaction as a non-bonded interaction. Now, of course, we set a uh, defined um, values for these. So the bond length and bond angle and bond torsion, we're gonna set it as a hump, as a parabolic kind of shape. So, you know, we would be very happy to have it at this point of bond length and angle and torsion. Well, for bond angle and torsion, it's gonna be a, a wave, but we're gonna have it very happy here. And of course, if we are not gonna get this fixed position, you're gonna experience some positive energy or disfavorable, you know, as you're violating the rules. And for the electrostatic, of course, you can imagine if you are light charge, you are, when they're closer, they're gonna be very, very, very favorable to interact and then gonna be distance over time for light charge, so plus minus. Um, and for, un for the light charge, which are the same charge, you're gonna have going that way with plus plus and minus minus. Leonard Jones is um, basically, if you're gonna to come too close to each other, you're gonna get repulsion and you're gonna have an optimal distance and then you're just gonna to die towards zero as you proceed along. Now, what you then do is that you then sum all of these energy of interaction. So you can have energy over distance and energy. So you have a sum, the bond length energy, the torsion energy and the bond angle and the energy from the non-bonded interaction, sum it all up together. And what that tells us, what, that, what does this tell us? Well, if you um, minus differential of the energy, yeah, VR over distance, you will get force, right? And what do we know about force? Well, force is equal to mass times acceleration we can write acceleration as a double differentiation of the position in time. So second derivative of the position over time. So that is our acceleration. And therefore what we can have is an updated movie based on the energy we calculated over a period of time, over short time steps. In many time steps, what we can guess, what we can model is a trajectory 
where molecules is moving from one state to the other state by computing the energy and sampling along these energy landscape. Because you can imagine that certain part of the molecules is going to be very disfavorable and certain parts going to be very favorable. And therefore it's going to sample along until it finds a local minima. And that's the key concept of MD simulation. In the next video, we'll be looking at the application of these. Let's go.